Um, hello, everyone. I'm David. I'm a TI, and I'm here with uh, um, Faraji, uh, Faraji, and uh, he's been a he's a MK Ultra survivor slash TI since 1979. He's come to share um, some stuff about his targeting as well as um, some some stuff that uh, you know. Well, his story leads into Hollywood and stuff like that. So I'll just let him tell it. Uh, um, so Faraji, uh, back. When, so how did you um, how did you find out in 1979 or whatever? How did all this start for you? The MK Ultra well, and all that. I didn't realize till later on, you know, much later on that I was targeted by the, um, you want to call it, they call it no touch torture, satanic ritual abuse platform, which is the dark side of fame, MK Ultra. And, um, yeah, it took me a bit. It took me about 17 years of research to realize that what was actually happening because, um, but yeah, when it really hit me, it was in 1979 when I was asked to go be a MTV VJ through KRQ Radio um, in Pasadena. And, um, that's when they selected me out to become gamed like Michael Douglas, Sean Penn in the game movie. That's a reality for people like us in our real life yep. situation being gamed like that, which is gang stalking, gang stalking, street theater. Um, everything goes around with um all of that, and that's yeah, and I survived. So I mean, if they can even come through it, it's like being Neo in the Matrix, man. You know what I'm saying? Every time you reach a potential in the game, then you are you are the system and your handlers are to kill you. I mean, I'm not you gonna know, say it's non lethal. I'm I'm here to tell you it's lethal. I have relatives. Oh yeah, and friends that, that I are mean, dead. there's a my dad, a... my cousins, my nephew. Uh, a lot of people don't want to go there and because their mind refuses to, but there there are certain levels of this targeting and certain well, targets do get murdered unalived and certain targets do get kidnapped and unalived and all that. Uh, a lot of targets don't want to let their brain go there. That's a possibility. But, you know, I've known a couple, you know. Well, yeah, cognitive dissonance in an active denial platform which is delivered to the do and all these other, you know, the, you know, the Gwen towers and all that combined with the LRAD and um, the ADS system that covers the United States, you know, to break denial, like they did in the matrix with Neo. Um, and he breaks denial, he gets sick and they give him an option. And it's like, Hey, you know, if you're chosen, in my opinion, if you're chosen, then you're chosen to, to choose, you know, for yourself, you know, and um, yeah, so cognitive dissonance is is a nasty business because it means you have to deal with all the trauma in your life consciously. And we do we you know I I know people that do that work with the shadow work and the zero pointing and the personality disorders that are accumulate through the V two K you know that creates all this chatter, and then of course the remote neural monitoring system which is a um, EEG or a quantum EEG heterodyning, which if targeted individuals can get to a, somebody does this kind of EEG work where they can get the brain activity in their brain. Now, my cousin was also tortured, um, Mark David Allen, and he um, he died like three or four times. Uh, oh, you gone? There you are. So um, they did an EEG on him and wrongfully, diagnosed epilepsy because the heterodyning in the brainwave um oh uh, the heterodyning in the brain waves creates um schizophrenia or mental disorders you know so you know i think it broke as i said mark david allen my cousin who was tortured as well you so know, how did you i get, think i sent you here. so in the 70s you said mtv invited you to dj was you a dj at clubs and stuff before that Yes. Yeah, yeah. With um I won't name their names, but KRQ Radio, I was with some up and coming people coming up in 
Is there any way you can adjust your uh, Zoom? You're you're frozen up. Can you can you help I mean, get your connection today, better? You're frozen up. I'm gonna pause the recording right now. Hold on. You can see me. Up there? Okay, now we're recording again. Hopefully, uh, it'll, it'll... I'll just hold. I'll just hold this phone. So. So you're saying that um, you know, you were hanging out with some prominent people um. So, so you were in the Hollywood circle, so to speak, for a while? Well, I was 16 and a half years old when I was introduced to KRQ Radio in Pasadena when its inception, which led to, of course, MTV and all that stuff. And I was invited to go and be a VJ, and then that's when my life started getting really turned upside down because of my potential. Um, they singled me out. Not they. I mean... See, it's not the military, it's not the government, it's not, I mean, there's, there's a shadow that runs all this whole thing, like, Scientologically, you know, and that all happened, you know, with the Council of Nicaea and all that stuff, whoever they were, <laughs> you know. So you're yeah. talking about L. Ron Hubbard stuff? Well, he was in the military, and he got his hands on um, some if you want to call it mind control manuals and stuff. So now I will tell you too, he was a targeted individual that was used to perpetuate this into Hollywood and all these other things. So I try not to focus on certain individuals, just the platform itself and the codes. I'm a code breaker. So I use codes and things. And if I start getting focused on people, places, things, um, you know, who, what, when, where's and why's, then I can't focus on maintaining a, um, a cognitive function to survive in the system, you know, in the matrix or whatever you want to call it, the active denial system. Right. So, uh, so, yeah. so um, how would you, I mean, could you name some MK ultra techniques that were used on you? Every single one. I mean, no different than like describe yeah. instances. Well, like I said, if you've seen the game with uh, Michael Douglas, oh, yeah. Okay, that's Scientology. If you've seen Tom Cruise with um, beautiful actress Triple Horn, that that woman, <sighs> um, Nicole Kidman, with Tom Cruise and these um, Scientology platforms that describe Scientology, and then the fact that Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, the a actress, or I don't see her as an actress. I just see her as somebody that was subjected to Scientology with her children. In real life, if you realize that the firm and um, Eyes Wide Shut, Katie Holmes had to live through that in reality, with, through Scientology, Hollywood and Vine, whatever. But that's a microcosm in the total platform of America. Politics, religion, um, of course, military and, um, you know, bread and circus entertainment. So and that's the Scientological platform for, you know. You know, Christian scientists, um, all that stuff. So, you yeah. know. But why do you think that they they chose you to experiment on? It's 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 more random than you would think. I mean, I mean, there are you know millions of targets. I mean, I don't have a. I don't think they specifically picked me on purpose. But as I went through potentials, they started taking notice of me. You know. No different than Neo in the Matrix, you know. You start taking notice of these, and there are millions of us, you know, like yourself. We're coming up through potential, 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 and then an active denial system that controls the totality of the United States, twenty twenty four. You know, we show up, man. There's only three hundred fifty nodes, if you will, and each human being in the United States can be. You can put it on a thumb drive, plug it in your computer, and you can control anyone you want. So um, people are sold back and forth. Targets are sold back and forth or traded be, be uh, against uh, amongst handlers and, you know, the satanic ritual use platform or traded back and forth celebrities or, I mean, I could channel you right now just about anybody. I'm not a channel, but it's programming. And I was assaulted through some channeling stuff. Um, I won't get into that because there's names and stuff that I, I shouldn't talk about. I know what you mean. I mean, I'd love to tell you, but um, right. Um. So, did you did you go through smear campaigns? Have you? Did they try to ruin been, your name? 
they have totally destroyed my relationship with my two oldest daughters. Um, got them thinking that I'm some kind of victim. You know, they wouldn't even talk to me. You know, they wouldn't even talk to the side of the family. Um, they try and get me. My mom lives next door here, and they try to get me to um, argue with her. She, I mean, I, you know, I've been celibate for ten years on purpose just to make sure I can integrate all of this gender and transhuman stuff, you know, without any interference. Um, yeah, so no, all my relationships have been broken and torn apart. And um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, they're pretty. They're per, they they were pretty sure that they were going to destroy and get me through the auto assisted suicide program to kill myself. Right. Um, which we see my father in law, um, from Barstow, California. I talked to him about this twenty seven years ago. He lasted about two years, but he ended up killing himself. Um, my I think I sent you a picture of my daughter. Did I send it to you? Yeah. Okay. In the hospital. Well, they nailed her with directed energy weapons to send me a message that I need to keep a mouth shut. You know, so it's like, yeah. You know, what do you what yeah. do you think they wanted you to keep your mouth shut about? Well, things that I'm not going to say now. See that now I'm like Robert Duncan. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's like there's things I don't want to interfere with your feed too because right. You know, right. I don't want to get shut down. You know, but I mean, if I was to talk to you in person. I'd tell you the whole story, you know what I'm saying? You know, when I hang this up, I'm going to be tortured right here in this room, bro. <sighs> uh, I understand that. Um, So what did you exactly want to talk about today? Just that. You know, I, um, I heard you, your testimonial about, you know, the cutting and, you know. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, so. And that's going on. People that don't understand how this works. They actually think they're mentally ill, you know, but it's synthetic. You know, it's it's a delivery system that makes us mentally ill and an act of denial on the downside of um, potential, you know. Unless we can get people, well, anyways, you can use this technology for the upside, you know, and give humanity some potential that's, but the forbidden knowledge is just, you know, it's been kept from humanity for a very long time right um have you ever experienced any honey pots have you ever sent honey pots your way well that would be the women that i've been involved with but nothing like um now are you familiar with steve schellenberger he wrote he made the movie the spark he's an actor uh -huh. a character well okay have you seen a river runs through it yeah but i don't uh it's been a long time. Okay, well, you'll remember this. The actor that um, shows up from Hollywood on a train, and he meets this woman in a bar, and he shows up late with a can of worms naked and gets sunburned. You remember that guy in, in the movie? Uh-huh. Okay, he's um he is a target individual, too. He's high profile, like Roseanne Barr or um Randy Quaid or any of these others that have come forward, like Beyonce. Beyonce says straight up, she goes, you know, when I go on stage, it's not me. And her name, her MK Ultra name is Sasha Fierce. She says, I talk to Sasha Fierce in my home. We talk her, we walk around like I do. I won't, I don't, I, anyways, I won't get into all these multiple personalities that come through, you know. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, he wrote and produced a movie, a documentary called Spark. His name is Stephen or Stephen Schellenberg. He's a character actor. He's been in like over 30 movies. He was in, if you remember, um, Gone in 60 Seconds, where um, Nicolas Cage walks in. He wants to buy a Ferrari. The salesman is Steph Stephen or Stephen. Yeah. Oh, okay. so check it out. Yeah. But he he's open to us about, you said honey potting and he was honey potted with a prostitute. He married her in real life, married her, had a child. And then he finally, it came about that he realized what happened. He was actually approached personally. I've never, I've only had one person. I won't remember, mention who they are because I just won't right now. Cause though this, this whole thing will shut down, bro. <laughs> it will. <laughs> so, right. Um, you know, seriously. Um, but, um, 
yeah and he tells his whole story he was he, he, they came up to him person i get a bar or something they said hey look man they ruined his life he was living in a car you know but yeah the spark um this is documentary about his true life so he 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 stars in it or he's not he didn't star in it he's just he's in it explaining how this gang stalking um street theater um whatever you want to call it you know works and and it's called spark yes S so just google spark documentary yes you need his name it's steven shellen okay yeah you'll find it I'll, I'll send it to you so now so how did you figure out what was going on with target individuals it took me 50 years, bro, to really, and then 17 years ago, um, there was some instances and I, and I had never used computers. I said, I have no computers, zero. I am, this is my technology. I'm like a paranormal, I'm called what's it called a supraliminal, which is beyond all paranormal. So I pick up on everything, which made me extremely tortured because, <laughs> you know, you have, they ever, have they ever they hit you with v2k a lot right now I mean, have I get, they ever moved objects in your house yes oh yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah I, you were talking about that the other day about telekinesis and stuff yeah yeah well check this check this out how do they move objects in my house well check this out if i'm an object and i'm a biocomputer system they're trying to get me to move around you know that, i mean that's a form yeah. of telekinesis this beyond the comprehension of most people. I mean, telekinesis is a human being doing involuntary reactions, like, you know, grinding your teeth at night, you know, that's telekinesis too. So they don't focus so much on moving stuff around my room, although they've thrown stuff off the wall or moved stuff, but they know that I, I'm fearless because I've, you know, they're going to do some kind of paranormal, you know, turn me into some kind of TV show. It's not going to happen, you know? <laughs> you know? Um, so what kind of... Could you explain some examples of some psyops that they do on you, street theater, stuff like that, stuff they like to do? Every single thing you can imagine I've been through since um, I was a kid, you know? You know, everything the wood headlights, the popping of the mufflers. You know, these guys got these things in their car. And, you, you know, you hear them go down the street, pop, 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 pop. And they drive by. I mean, this is a, a minor, you know, gang stalking tactic. But the one headlight thing where they will follow you around in town. And every car that pulls up behind you has got one headlight on, you know, that kind of stuff. But these guys have on a key thought. Like, I saw this one guy, he's like talking about it, he goes, but yeah, I got a key fob on my car and um in the muffler, I pushed my key fob and it pops. You know, it, it, the exhaust pops. And when I drive by their house, I'm told to just pop it. And then they drive by and then I'm hit with V2K like, oh, they're gang stalking you, you know. And there's a paranoia and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, you don't have to be on drugs to be completely devastated with paranoia or fear or, you know, that kind of thing. So, Not at all. Um, I've been in fight or flight, <laughs> you know, when I get gang stalked, uh, you know, especially in 2015, I was in fight or flight 24 seven. So you got to figure I had my adrenaline pumping fight or flight, you know, four or five months at a time. Yeah. You know, cause when I was getting gang stalked, you know, and V2K was injecting thoughts of being kidnapped and murdered and all that. So I would never stop walking. And if I stopped walking, it would be for like a 10 minute, like I would walk literally 24 hours a day until I found somewhere where my gut said, all right, it's safe to sleep here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's why dogs, domesticated dogs spin in a circle before they lay down. I used to think like, oh, they're looking for the North or South Pole. No, dogs, domesticated dogs, are they live in a kind of fear-based reality. Not kind of, but so they spin around before they lay down because they're looking for the safest place to face in case there's danger coming at them. Right. So, yeah. Right. And humans do the same thing. You know, we got all these people that are homeless people and they're spinning around because they're under active denial technology, you know. And they can't find a safe place. So what do they do? Well, they're going to go for the drugs that knock them out. So they nod out and 
because they can't find a safe place, brother. These homeless people cannot find a safe place. I can't find a safe place in my own home, you know. You know. Right. But I've transcended what the fear trip. You know? What I usually do, and there was a place in Pensacola uh, where I had where I could duck off, and I. You remember the old gutters that were ceramic? They're old gutters. Anyway, this building had this old gutter on it, and I had my backpack on me. And I shimmied up the building to the second story, and all there was was an air conditioner unit, which came on every six minutes, so it really wasn't good for using the phone, but it was a safe spot to lay down, you know, and just get some rest. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So you no, can't, can you hold a job? What's up? Are you able to hold a job? I did for a long time. I've been on disability now for for about since 2016. I had a psychiatrist who I finally ran into somebody. He goes, you know, he goes, you're not crazy. I mean, the diagnosis was um, what do they call that uh, I don't know, schizo psychotic or schizophrenic, you know, with um, multi personality, all that stuff. But he's talking to him. And he's like, you know, what? there's something else going on here. And, um, you, you're, you're lit up. I can tell that there's something else going on. You're not sick. You're not mentally ill. You're just, something else is going on. And, um, thankfully you, it was quite a few years later and a disability check showed up in the mail. So I guess, um, they pushed it through and got me some help. So I'm just doing what I do. I do, I'm full blown research. That's all I do 24 seven. Um, like I said, I started, um, I don't know, 2008 or whatever, after my last relationship was broken up on purpose because of all this. Um, and if you know who John C. Lilly is, um, he was a renegade. He became a blackballed scientist and he was studying the dolphins, um, their minds and mapping the brains. And then the Navy stepped in, isolated him like me. He's in our family, Malibu contingency. Um on the central and coast of California. And they isolated him and did the same thing to me because I'm in that family too. And, um, yeah. So yeah, check out John C. Lilly and his work of cognitive, um, um, cyber cognitions and, um, Gregory Bateson and these other people that were involved. So you, do you think you, are, you, are, do you think you experience heterodyning? Oh yes, that is the blending. Uh, that is, see if you like have when it. I close my eyes, I vibrate and get shocked. No matter if it's for a one, like if I was to do it right now, vibrations get shocked. Um, yeah. Every time I close my eyes, I, I think that's a form of heterodyning. Um, I, I don't know. I just think that they got my brain. They got me programmed to where even if I close when I close my eyes, I start getting attacked. So. The supercomputer knows when I'm fixing to close, when I close my eyes, I guess it can sense me going into Delta state. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, yeah, th that's how the, that works. Cause there's an oscilloscope, even in your GPS in your car, when you push it and you look for where you're going to go, you say, Oh, take me here. It's got to cut through all the heterodyning. So you can see all this blending, like in some cars, you'll see all these waves going like this. And then it goes into a circle. Uh -huh. And uh, they are still in the car, and, this, and it says, let's go. And it tells you where to go. Now, with humans, it's the same thing, which is why Tesla loved pigeons, man. He was like, Nicole was like, I got pigeons. He, he loved pigeons because even with all this, what's going on, the pigeons could still navigate. Now, what they did with John Lilly's stuff is they started beaching and experimenting on whales, and they started beaching whales. You see these whales being beached, dolphins being beached, seals being beached. But dolphins have a, a higher cognition and more potential than humans do. And that's why you went with that. But so back to the um, heterodyning, it's not um, just the V2. When they heterodyned the V2K, all the voices, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff going on. Chatterbots, yeah. And yeah. Well, yeah, there's nanoids now. And the, the, Technology now has melanin in it because melanin is highly conductive. So that's why they could they could enslave black people physically. And it took them a while to figure out how to enslave them mentally. 
which is why, you know, we became, you know, bred more white because we're e more easily less conductive than um, the melanated people. That's why there's only so many allowed in the United States and in the military and all this other stuff. So they they know what slavery is. And, you know, in an active dial system, you know, when we're hyper domesticated, we can't really discern. And when you that, say active you now, know. could you tell tell the viewers what you mean by that? The active denial system is what controls the totality of the United States through the satellites, through the ground base, through the Gwen Towers. So it is literally the active denial. Are you there? Oh, there you are. It's the behavior modification through satellites, towers, and everything. It is. Supercomputers. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's the LRAD, long distance um, auditory, um, you know, dispensing or... Um, Long LRAD. Anyways, they're hitting me right now. I hear you say this too. They're like getting me. So, yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah. The Matrix is literally the active denial control grid that hugs the ground from the Gwen Towers and the system that we're literally breathing in electricity. So, Rana. I know, try to tell Rana. people this all the time. Um, the Gwen Towers have managed to, they're spread out ever so many miles and um they blanket the ground like you said they got the whole united states the whole globe blanketed with uh, basically a weapon system it is the do uh well gwen do you know the, that's it's inverted they'll say oh well what's for controlling and protecting well what well their their commodity which is the human being you know you know so you humans are Go ahead. Did you ever, did you used to have a good job? What was your life like before you were targeted? Oh, I've had several jobs, you know. I'm I think saying, the longest did you used one to I have had... a real, did, Was you having a really good life before you were targeted? No, never. No. No. It's always been this way, so. Yeah. Oh, so you've been a target I've since always... you were little. Yeah. I came in in 1963, and then in 1979 is when they really nailed me. Then I went into the car business with my father, who was tortured and is now, he's no longer here with, most of them in my family are gone. So, and they were all targets, too, for evoked potential, so. And I went you into mentioned the car Kurt Cobain and um, Lynn Staley, I think, and all that. Do you know stuff about them that you could share? Well, Yeah. Well, Audio Slave, of course, was going through the same thing. He reported it, the lead singer. I don't know his name off right now. Chris Cornell from um, Soundgarden. He uh -huh. reported all this. He's gone now. Kurt Cobain was going through it. He reported it, and he's gone now. So, And this came around with a Temple of the Dog, Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, these other bands, you know, that um, Allison and Chains that were reporting this. So... Yeah. yeah, they were all but their handlers, they and, pick and choose who they're going to. And it seems like, um, you know, some people call it Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. It seems like when you're worth more dead than alive, they come for you. you know? Well, yeah. Well, you've heard, of, you've heard of the 27 Club, probably, where, you know, there's hundreds of celebrities, not just in the United States, that were, you know, you got Janis Joplin, you got Jim Morrison, you got Jimmy Hendrix. Right, and what happened when they died? They made bank off their albums. You see? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we see what's happening with Taylor Swift right now with this, her being um, controlled through the system, through the MKUltra. They're literally, well, her new, her album was literally called the Tortured Poet Department. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Well, yeah. You know, you got Nicki Minaj openly and outrageous saying, yeah, I got three entities on me and they all want to talk to me. They're all raping me and they want to have sex with me. They want to beat me up. And then when I'm on stage, we all get together and perform. It's like, you know, same with, like I said, Beyonce. If you find the Beyonce interview with Beyonce and Oprah Winfrey and Beyonce says, look, when I go on stage, Sasha Fierce shows up. She goes out there and sings, does all this stuff. And then when, when do you Sasha think Fierce that's a multiple done, person? Do you think they've been, do you think it's because of the trauma has disassociated them into different personalities? 
Well, it has, but because well, trauma based mind pro control, some training. of it, they have some handlers. areas of trauma based mind control is sent to break you, split the personalities off, and certain personalities can be triggered by certain words or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so check this out. Have you seen Zoolander one and two? Uh uh. With Ben Stiller. Okay, Zoolander is a perfect example of this. You have Will Ferrell, who is Mugatu. You have Ben Stiller, who is now being a Manchurian candidate, who is triggered by this Relax, Don't Do It song. I mean, this is right in our face, man. It's like if you watch the Zoolander, you can see it. And then Zula and then Ben Stiller is made into a Manchurian candidate to kill the prime minister of Malaysia. You know, this is MK Ultra at his finest, right in our face. Zoolander one and two, or yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's right, it's right there, man. It's all in all the programming. Well, you got the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. That's a reality for me. I'm Truman, man. I got handlers. They talk to me all day. They want to. You know, one thing we haven't talked about is the sexual abuse and the remote rape and the remote, you know, is nasty, bro. There's a beautiful woman. Her name is Mariana Maritato, and she's on the international. You froze up. All right. You were talking about Mary. Mariana Maritato, mm -hmm. her testimonial on YouTube. She actually went through the whole thing. They actually triangulated where the signals were coming from. Because we know it's not the military. The military, our family and friends in the military aren't the ones to blame. There's a shadow that uses that platform and all the technology um, on us, you know, on the civilian population with the active denial technology. But yeah, Mariana Maritato, and she did all the research and she put, and I would suggest that the NTI, I haven't done it yet just because I'm isolated, but to put a camera in your room and watch your involuntary movements when you're sleeping, the teeth grinding, the, you know, all the, all that stuff, the, you know, the moving around, but the sexual abuse through this platform is, it is part of the thing that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but I get hit all the time with the V2K and all the sexual satanic, like, it's nasty, bro. Now, they've yeah. shocked my, they started shocking my left test, testicle lately, but I guess I'm lucky. I, I've known a lot of people that's experienced that sex stuff, and I, I, I'm i so glad that it, it hasn't happened to me. Um, it's got to be very humiliating and, and very aggravating. Okay. Yeah, he froze he up back. again. Yeah, that's going to happen when I get into this other stuff, especially with around the sex stuff. You know, this yeah, is how they try get to keep it as clean as you can. Act out. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you see these women on stage and they're doing like Miley Cyrus has been attacked and is known as an MK Ultra. Um, I don't, well, an industry. You know, she's, a, she's, a, I guess I use the word, she's an MK, she has been used as an MK to a slave. You know, you've seen this stuff with PDD right now, probably, you know, all that stuff, so. <laughs> I mean, it goes deeper than we can ever imagine, I know that. Yeah, well, you've seen yeah. all this stuff now with, with Diddy Combs, you know, and all this stuff, so, and that's all, you know. God bless those people. They're being nailed, you know. It's just like the same thing they did to Michael Jackson. You know, they really just drew his life out and used him and abused him. And, you know, whatever happened, happened. But people can, anyways, yeah. <laughs> and then what happened when he died, they made millions off of it. See, when, yes. they always say, they're, when you're worth more dead than alive, they're coming for you. Yeah. Well, here's a really interesting piece of information now. Elvis Presley, right? Uh huh. Y'all bear with me. He 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 freezes up sometimes, and I'm gonna try to pause it until he gets unfroze. Okay. There's a man named Roy. All right. 
You there? Are you good? I'm here, yeah. A man named who? Roy Hamilton. He was a black um, singer. Uh-huh. An amazing man. Look him up, Roy Hamilton. Now, when Elvis came in, Roy Hamilton died, and they took all of Roy Hamilton's sentient emotional bio um, storage of his bio, of his being and stored it in a biocomputer, Roy Hamilton, and then they brought in Elvis. They could have brought anybody in, but they chose Elvis for whatever reason, Presley. Then they transposed all of that genetic material through um, sentient programming and gave it to Elvis. Now, if you listen to Elvis, you will heal Roy Hamilton, and that's how Elvis got famous. Yeah. <laughs> and they do that with actors and stuff like that. So, actually, Roy Hamilton is Elvis, and Elvis is Roy Hamilton through the bio, you know, the exascale computers for bio computing. The or, transhumanism. You know. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's storage, you know, we're, this is a biocomputer system. So you can store all the sentience. This is how they do computer generated images. It's not just a computer generated images. It's their voice, their emotions, their feelings, their thoughts, everything they do. And they can download that in a human being like Jim Carrey and make him Andy Kaufman, or they can do it with Val Kilmer and make him Jim Morrison. Literally. Yeah, and I, I got, I got a video about that. The Centennial world simulation. There you go, Livingstone. Yeah, man. So yeah. Livingstone. Yeah, yeah. I got that too. So, so I won't. Yeah, other stuff goes, comes up. It, trying it, to... This program really goes a lot deeper than, you know, than your V two K, your remote neuron monitoring, and gang stalking. It goes a lot deeper than that. You know, it runs a lot deeper it, than that. Yeah, it's literally um, robbing our taking our sentient programming putting it into a biocomputer system like the exascale computers or now these computers. Well, yeah. Well, they, check this out. This is the realization I can. And you froze up again. I'm gonna pause for a minute and we'll be back when he unfreezes. All right, you were talking about I was said something about avatars and you started talking about something. Well, yeah, the human being, me, is is an avatar of the system. I mean, there's a DNA bioresonance of me and my DNA bioresonance that can be augmented in the system. But I realize I'm the avatar in the matrix, bro. It's like, you know, it's like you know what I'm saying? It's like for a long time, I thought, oh, my gosh, they got a digital twin of me somewhere. And I realized I am the digital twin, literally in a holographic expression, you know, in this in the simulation of the Matrix. You know, it's like, you know, things get inverted, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it gets a lot deeper than what we've been told. Um, and by the way... um. I will be having Project Soul Catcher read through part four coming this week too. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just, you know, I really think, you know, everybody talks about V2K remote neuron monitoring, but it's a lot deeper than we even know, you know, especially with the wireless body area network and all that going on. You know, we, we are a biofield. And um, uh, there's no telling... You know, like Robert Duncan says in that book, um, Project Soul Catcher, you know, it's all it's all energy and stuff and chakras and all kinds of stuff going on in your body, and there's no telling what they can hack into and what they can do to your body. Well, yeah, it's a full body hack. I can walk and I can hear the V2K when I walk. I can cut my teeth and I can hear him hear the V2K. I can tap my fingers. What's your V2K? Do they do they terrorize you, talk down on you? It's satanic ritual abuse. It's it's no touch torture. It is um nasty. But I found if I put my tongue to the top of my mouth, or I change it with intention, because I know the gift of tongues and it's not talking. I can literally put my tongue to the roof of my mouth when the V2K is coming through. And if it's telling me nasty stuff, then I say, I love you. We are a compassionate family. And it flips it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I do control yeah. breathing when I'm getting V2K a lot. 
multitasking helps me. Uh, hand pan music with frequencies helps my V2K. But my V2K likes to come at me with threats, um, like serious always, threats. Always. Like I'm going to be cut up to pieces, and uh, if I make this move, this is going to happen. If I do this, this is gonna, I'm worthless. You know, it always wants to come with threats and all that. Yeah, it wants to break you down. It wants to break me down. It wants me to disassociate with the monarch mind control, which is why they choose children. The Mickey Mouse Club and all these other ones. Even Michael J. Fox right now, I'm trying to, you know, he's under attack. Val Kilmer is under attack. I say these people because they're global. You know, if I talk about other people around here, people just don't even recognize it. But when, you, you know, it's family that we love and adore and respect that are global, you know, then we can rescue, you know, get these people up, then it goes global. Otherwise, I can tell people, my neighbor, my family, and just is like farting in the, <laughs> like in the wind, you know, it's like. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember that dude that was Simon Cowell's friend that, that they said jumped off a balcony. I think he was thrown off a balcony. What do you think? I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Is that the guy from American Idol or something? Or uh, Simon? I forgot, man. I was reading it the other day. I think his name is Noah or something. Um, not three doors down, I don't think. Uh, anyway, they're saying he jumped off this balcony and I just don't believe it. Oh, he was a lead singer or something in Three Doors mm -hmm. Down? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I don't buy into that stuff too. It's really easy when somebody's asleep, you know, especially if they're intoxicated Liam or something. Liam Payne. Liam Payne. I'm going to write that down. So I'll, I'll look into that. Man. So, yeah, Lynn Payne um, attended and the city and attended and been in London. And anyway, he it said he jumped off his uh, balcony, but I I just don't believe it. Uh, but I just really think that there's so much stuff that you know it would blow our minds. You know, we we know V2K, we we know remote neural monitoring. We know dream manipulation, but getting into the sentient, sentient stuff and all that, it's a lot deeper than we know yeah. and what they're doing and trying to, you know, I, I just, um, I really think everybody's going to be hooked up to this one day and that's the goal. You know, they're already starting to collect everybody's no, DNA. Yeah. Everybody's well, DNA is being collected. Matter of fact, they, they solved the Golden State Killer's murder through 23 and Me. Um, genealogy right and so because you know once they get your DNA or brain signature whatever then they got control then they got the control yeah yeah because your body puts off frequencies it's all you, man. is there anything else you wanted to talk about Well, I can tell you this, um, if you know any storage data for computers, 433 petabytes equals one gram of human DNA. In one gram of human DNA, you can store five billion pages of information. So with 500 billion pages of information in one gram of DNA in a human, we have about 60 grams. So... Um, Dude, that's smaller than a thumb drive. You can store the entire population of humanity on a thumb drive. If you've seen Lucy with Scarlett Johansson in the movie. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is, how simple it is for them. You know, you can store the entire population of the United States on a thumb drive and um, buy it, sell it, pass it around. You know, but they're monitoring who gets what, of course, you know. <laughs> so when you, other than that, when man, you yeah, said I'm that, good. When you said that different handlers... It. When you said different handlers sell us off to other handlers and stuff, could you explain how that works? Like, do you think the handler gets tired of well, us? And, be... and then some other handlers say, oh, that's an interesting target. I'll pay you this much and to free yeah. hand him over yeah, to we me. Used to go, yeah, we used to go as cheap as like, you know, 500 bucks. Like back in the 70s, they trade us back and forth to the handlers. And now it's like they can't really do it so much because we're all linked in. So you get a, like somebody like me and you pass it to somebody else and like, man, my, my, my stuff's all messed up now. Who is this guy? And now I become famous to all these satanic people, ritual abusers. 
and they don't want anything to do with me anymore. There's only a small grouping now that's handling me because the people that know who I am um, know that I can invert stuff and, you know, their computers get messed up and it's tied into every single celebrity in Hollywood. And, in, you know, and they don't, they're finding out that these celebrities are like starting to hear stuff, you know, and they're like, so they're like, I don't want anything to do with this guy. I don't want anything to do with them. I don't want to do with any of this Malibu people or contingencies in these actors because now it's showing up in my feed. I can hear them in their homes, through my computer. I'm hearing them through my phones. I'm hearing them through my Google Nest thing. You know, it's like active loaded. It's called active loaded. I had I had a woman that worked with military people about 15 years ago. And remotely, I, sh I guess I showed up on her screen. She says, you, sir, are active loaded. I was like, well, that's active loaded. It was like, um, well, when military people are in the military and they're non-consensually experimented on, they're active loaded with programming. And then they get sent home with PTSD. So we all know how that is. If you've seen Bradley Cooper and American Sniper, you know, and of course, you know, these other people in these movies and, and this is in real life, you know. So how do you deal with yeah. how do you cope with all this? I I I'm tortured, bro. When I hang up, um, they're gonna be wanting to talk to me about all this and and they're gonna want to anyway, so I'm gonna be tortured, bro. So I really appreciate you. I haven't been allowed to even do I have had podcasts set up with several people and um they've all been thwarted. So that I could even talk to you is a really big deal for me because I got no one, bro. I'm, literally, I got no one. I'm in a prison in my home. So, you yeah. know. All right. Oh, well, you sent me your uh, number. I, I'll call you every now and then, and we can catch up and stuff. If they let the phone calls go through, you know, they, they like rerouting my calls too. But uh, I think you yeah. did send me your it, number, it, and I, I'll, I'll call you and catch, catch up sometime. Well, if you got a pen, I'll give it to you now. No, well, you, right do oh, you, guys... you don't want to do it on the recording. You don't. You don't want to do it on the recording. I don't care, man. Don't if you don't want it. I'm going to stop the recording right now. But uh, I really appreciate you coming, and because I don't want you giving your number out on the recording, and then everybody be calling you. you got perks and stuff. So 